<laughs> well, thank you very much. So this is, I'm, I'm Juan Carlos Flores. I'm representing Baker Hughes. We'll have a little introduction, but this is a real case. It's not a potential case. We actually print and produce, right? So it's actually a production example that we are going to share and actually present to you today. Uh, Baker Hughes and Baker Hughes and uh, Tommaso is a uh, uh, Octon. Go to the next slide, please. It's here. Oh, here. Okay, sorry. I think. Uh, there we go. Okay. So I'm part of the Baker Hughes team. I'm the director of additive manufacturing globally, and I look after the strategies on how we can actually utilize additive in, in the portfolio that we have. How we can help our customers, and I've been doing uh, working with Baker Hughes for about 26 years. A lot of uh, activity in the regulated environment. That's what we are actually focusing on in the energy sector. Tommaso is part of the Octon team, so the product manager for the monitoring, real-time monitoring on the portfolio that we are going to present today. Quickly, Baker Hughes, for those that do not know, is an energy company that we, it's a technology company that plays in all the field of the energy sector. We have about 55,000 employees, 22,000 uh, billions of revenue per year. And um, we have about 8,000 engineers that are actually you know, in the portfolio. And we are present in 120 countries. Octon? Yeah, and we are working with Baker Hughes, and we are a software company. Uh, we have a very comprehensive portfolio of products that ranges from reverse engineering. We have a manufacturing operating system in the cloud to streamline production. And we also have a software for build preparation, simulation, and monitoring and inspection, uh, which is 3D expert. Uh, so we are best in class for that type of uh, product, and very solidly working together with Baker Hughes. Perfect. So the, the real, now let's go to the problem that we're trying to solve, or what we, are, we were actually after. So we want to use IoT manufacturing in our, our industrial processes, and we're trying to use IoT manufacturing as a disruptor of the secondary you know, metal fabrication processes, right? So we want to replace processes that have over 100 years, centuries, and during those 100 years, we have lessons learned, failures, we have you no know, catastrophic events. That then those lessons learned are put into f regulations and product you know, compliance and standards that we have to follow to not repeat those mistakes again. The liabilities in the energy sectors are huge, right? So we're talking about a failure is a catastrophe. It could be environmental, or it could be actually disaster on a city or on a community. So the liability for the operator or the manufacturer that actually put in practice those parts have huge impact. So we're not talking about you know, simple parts. We're talking about critical components that we use in the industry for these cases. So the question is how we can actually cover the liabilities, how we can assure that that process is repeatable every time. And every time that we develop a new product, the sustainability of that product goes beyond just the first, the first sample that we actually print. Because we have to actually repeat that over and over because the liabilities are there, right? OK, so with this in mind, we work on all the aspects of the energy. So we have, you know, we're in the gas technology, the industrial. We are part, we're part of the industrial asset management for the industry as well. We, we, we touch the energy from the oil and gas down drilling and extracting the oil all the way up to producing electricity from the turbo machinery equipment. So we have the portfolio that is end to end in the energy sectors. Uh, when we started in the, in the journal additive 11 years ago right now with a lot of investment in, in year on year, and we have you know, probably about uh, more than 1,000, 1,500 parts that we have qualified in the energy sectors. I'm talking about parts there are no door knobs or hinges or, <laughs> or a screw or nuts. We're talking about parts as an example that we have below here, and we have produced over 100,000 parts of those that are in the field operating right now. So the question is how we repeat the process to sustain that uh, you know, reliability and that uh, quality that we actually require to, that we owe to the customers. Now, the next question is that those parts go in the field, and it goes in the field and stays there for 30 years. I'm talking about a valve that goes into a sub C3 that has to sustain a 30-year reliability index. So we have vibration downhole, we have vibration in the water, we have corrosion in the sub C, and we have all kind of you know, environmental uh, risks if, that, if there is a leak or if there's a corrosion or if there's a, it's a crack, right? So we have to really guarantee a 30-year lifespan with no errors in that manufacturing process. And the liabilities of those mistakes are going to be, you know, really, really cascaded down. So we're talking about if we put a valve today, we have to have the documentation and traceability for that, for that part up to 30, 35 years by regulation and by law. 
So that, that's, that, that's the, 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 the main, main requirement for us. Now, go to the next one. For us, the, 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 key, the key for us in the process control is, of course, the governance, the control, and the quality assurance. But we know for a fact that IIT manufacturers have hundreds of variables through the process. And we have to actually monitor the hundreds of variables. And we have to identify which one are the sensitive variables for that process control to be stable. So in the last 11, 10 years, we have been working to determine which are the variables that we have to look, which are the ones that we can maybe don't look that much, and focus on the ones that are actually impacting the output of that production. So on that, on that graph on the left, you say, OK, how we can do this practically? And we can do that economically. So we are not a, we're a profit for organization. So we do actually have to get profit. We don't rely on government for subsidy, or we don't rely on equity funds. Right? We have to actually make money. So we have to find solutions that goes practical and provide us an ROI versus the investment that we actually put for there. One of the first things that we actually noticed was, OK, guys, you know, 60% of our Quality notification are coming from recording issues and are coming from simple, you know, parameters in the machine that we could actually monitor. The rest will be actually quality notification that we can actually go deeper and we can actually analyze those. But if we can actually get 60, 50 percent of our quality notification on the radar, we are really reducing our scrap 50 percent or our quality notifications. So these are just examples and how the process control are so critical. We have a recorder issue. We have a recorder line. The density of the material on those recording lines changes. We have a change in the, the, in the one on the dimensions. Right? We, had a, what, we had a case in which we just updated the release of the software, and the dimension actually changed the distortion of the other of the, of the part. And we're talking about tolerance that will hold that. This is a, a locking key in one of our casings that have to keep the tolerance pretty tight. Right? Now, we have a case where we have a, a excess of soot particles because our flow was actually getting a little bit low because the, 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 the filter was actually getting a little bit plugged. So we have excess of soot. So the density of those soots in, this, in the low side of the machine were bad, and we have a bad porosity or maybe a bad density. So you might get away with a print, and you think everything is good. 20 years from now, the part cracked, and then we have to actually demonstrate our customer that the process was intact through the process of the printing. That's how we cover our liabilities, right? So the question was, OK, how we can monitor, prepare, and really have a documentation stable enough that we can actually be confident that we are OK with our liabilities, but at the same time, we can produce a report quickly to our customers. And if a regulatory entity comes and asks us, guys, can we actually provide enough documentation to prove them that the process was really sustainable? That's the question, how we do that. So we sometime ago, talking and evaluating, we started evaluating if we can actually dumb down that process monitoring in a way we can actually have a quick reaction and we can actually have that documentation streamlined. So we partner with Octon, and Octon helped us to actually develop that really quick practical tool that we, were, we, we initiated, but they took it to the next level. Yeah, thank you. So basically, we try to streamline the quality control over the whole production before to prevent anomalies, then during in situ monitoring in real time, cloud-based, in order to have uh, uh, basically the detection of this anomaly and being able to do something about it, but something for real that can prevent machine time loss and so on, and also material loss, of course. And then in the end, an inspection against also uh, your parts together with simulation data, overlay of scan paths, in the end to create a sort of report uh, that allows you very compactly to show that your part is reliable, that your parts that you have built maybe 20 years ago is not the problem. And so basically here we have a build and a simulation product, uh, which is a GPU solver that allows to prevent issues like uh, shrink lines, uh, deformation, uh, cracks in uh, uh, in uh, support structure and so on. Of course, you cannot predict everything. A physics-based simulator only predicts things that are predictable and not micro errors in the process or things like this, quality of powder and so on, things that you cannot really prevent. So what you can do then is you can connect uh, with an edge device, we call it gateway, to to a printer, any printer. We are printer agnostics. Uh, but in this case, we work together with uh, Baker Hughes and, and with SLM in order to uh, provide this solution. And we have a best-in-class AI model that does also volumetric aggregation. You can export these results that run in real time and then bring them in into 3D Expert, visualize them together with simulation, with scan paths, and start to think about root cause analysis if there was a problem. And if there was not a problem, you can go to your customers and tell them, 
here it is. This is the quality I provide for you. Uh, this is a little animation of actually this part that you can see there. Uh, I don't know, JC, if you want to mention something about this yeah, part. Yeah, so this is the valve that goes in one of the, so the, we have valve for this that runs in the refineries, in the nuclear plants, and in different you know, chemical organizations they have to restrict flow, change the CV, noise attenuation. It's actually a production valve that uh, we run on AM as a standard manufacturing process. So I actually took this valve, I, told, I went to the production floor and asked them last week, just cut one for me with a you know, with, with support structure so I can take it to Formnex. So it's exactly a production, plant, the production part that we're running right now. Right. And indeed, so this part is what we used as, a, as a, an initial test case to show. Uh, you can see here that the first stage we did like mechanical simulation and deformation, thermal analysis to prevent overheat. And this already you can start populating your report with this type of information if you had some pre-deformation that was above uh, the... Can, you can someone replay the video, please? Um, So, well, anyway, the video was uh, relating, showing thermal analysis. And then after the thermal analysis, uh, there is the real-time monitoring video that actually uh, shows the, inline pro the online process monitoring fully in real-time, layer by layer, with 3D aggregation, and afterwards, uh, 3D expert again. How do we do it? How complex is that? How, uh, you can, how much you can actually use it in a production where, indeed, you actually have to make money? It has to be practical. So the idea, the idea here was just as simple as taking the, the image of a machine as they are rectified, and there are hundreds of thousands of images that has been labeled with a, with, a, with a production floor, and those has been trained to identify the most common problem that we had in that table that I showed you at the beginning, right? So the AI model is actually trained it to identify quickly, OK, this is a potential issue. You have a recorder issue. This is a distortion that is coming up. So th that's how the model actually works. And we actually don't ask our customers to add any hardware to the printer. We purely work, purely work on vision. If you have a camera there, that's it. It has to be quick and it has to be useful. So we connected an SLM printer with our Octon gateway. And then from the Octon gateway in the operational workshop of, uh, of Baker Hughes, then we stream data to a tenant of Baker Hughes uh, on our cloud platform. And we basically show all these uh, analysis in real time. And, and that happened in real time. So this is in real time. It's not after post-processing. So as the images are coming, right. the edge device is actually processing those in the in in AI model, and they, it's automatically generated. Right? So indeed, it's just real time images of the accuracy that is good enough not too high, not too low resolution, analyze the real time on the edge device such that we can have a very limited amount of data for speed that can go to the cloud in real time. And in the end, you can have an analysis, scroll through your images, scroll through your volumes, take actually an action during. Uh, if you have a problem and you see that an anomaly is growing, 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 you can stop the print before. If it is affecting in a tray other parts because you have a recorder line, you can just skip that part, and that is a lot of time and a lot of material and money that you can save. The operator obviously have to take the decision for now because they're the expert. They have to evaluate if the anomaly is uh, good, is, like say, severe enough in order to take an action. Um, and then the next, after, let's say that the build goes well, it can still be that an anomaly that is not critical, the build still finishes, but it aggregates. It brings some little defects, some little anomalies. And is it good enough or not? So we can export the data, show it in 3D Expert, and create a traceability report for our uh, clicks on the workshop to basically check, OK, this is good enough, this is not good enough. Uh, very quickly, and if something is not good enough, they can delve deeper, go deeper, see the images, uh, go and check inside of 3D Expert, what can we do with a different support so, structure. So there are two values for us here. One, the first value is that real time we can actually have a flag if something is going wrong. So we can, act, the operator will get a message, a text message, or an email, hey, you know, look in this, this machine, something is going on, he can go and check it out. That's the first thing. The second thing is that once the data is completed and the part is completed, all that imaging is actually indexed in the 3D CAD to the part that we actually produce it. And we produce a report that is a condensated report telling you how good was the print. Was it good enough to actually pass the qualification process? Or we have to go on to an extra level to inspection, maybe a CT scan or a detailed level, so we can make sure that the part actually passes the train. But the, the safe part is that if it's a critical component, we don't have to go a CT scan every single component. If the process has no flags, it just move on. If it has some flags, then those ones are the ones we identify for post, no, like more intense uh, investigation or CT scan or any other volumetric that we can actually do. 
So there, there will actually be an example on the screen. If you want, you can have one of these. And the reason why I say you can have one of these is that a lot of other uh, processes have reports. But here we're not talking about 200 pages report. Actually, uh, Baker told us very clearly, five pages max, that's your limit. Three, we get to uh, five. I just, I just added two. Just a bit safer. But three pages max, look at your parts, analyze them quickly, then go delve deeper if you really need. Correct. So in, in a nutshell, right, we try to the, identify the formation and stressor, recording interference. We try to look into the string lamp prediction, thermal and overheat. With, with those simple you know, identification from the image, very simple, with the AI model, we get those flags. And that helps us you know, significantly in the production. Now, the next one, these are the pre-coded images. These are the no, pause recorder, and this is an anomaly overlay. So we do that. Those overlay and actually go into the no, 3D spectrum, and then we can get that report the half time. The, the good thing about this is that the operator doesn't have to be in the machine all the time looking to the part, right? If something exactly. didn't flag as a red that it had to stop, and it may be a yellow that we, we, we put those threshold, you can actually post mortem go into the image and say, OK, look at, and identify which layer was it. You know, you have thousands of layers and thousands of image the software will actually tell you, look into this one. And then you take your decision if you actually pass it or not. So yeah, it's very practical. Then, uh, well, it's a base. I think it's a, we have the post print inspection that I just talked about it. Yeah. 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 And then uh, this is the final report that the master showed that we Three get for the, for the production. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, so what we actually demonstrated, and in, in this case, you go to the last one because we're running out of time, is that we achieve a cost efficient way to monitor a process in a way that is practical, right? It's not really over the top. We have, we have evaluated you know, pool monitoring, sound detects, but I think we, we landed up with something that is basic and easy to actually you know, utilize. You know, uh, we, it's an open system. You know, we, you know, uh, the, the idea for us in our strategy is to really go into an uh, autonomous process, and this is just one step for us to go into that autonomous process. Right? No, um, well, and that's, the, that's really the case example that we have for you today. So any questions? If you have any questions. <laughs>